What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Pace Studio here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. We are broadcasting to you live from the Manhattan Center here on 34th Street, as always, and we are really, really pleased to welcome Caitlin Canty back to The Pace Studio. Thank you. And we are also pleased to welcome Noam Pakelny, uh back to The Pace Studio. I think <laughs> both of you guys are veterans of this, not this exact room, but right. The Pace Studio in general. Um, Noam uh, produced Caitlin's new records called Motel Bouquet. Just came out March 30th. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really excited to hear three songs from that record. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Yeah, uh, we're really excited about this. So um, let's get us started off with some music. Tell me a little bit about what we're going to open up with today. Sure. Uh, we actually co-wrote this song. I've never co-written something with a producer. <laughs> it's usually crossing the line. But we, we co-wrote this. I had started a song and I was on, unhappy with, I got bored with it halfway through and it was, there's something wrong with the music and Noam had some great ideas. So I don't know yeah. if that. Mostly chords. <laughs> Mostly chords. And he gets a co-writer credit for that? Oh yeah. 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 Well, that's, there that's are a lot, of, a lot of, a lot that's of changes. The that's, how the law, <laughs> that's, that's the law in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna try it? Yeah. Two, three, four. <laughs> Something warms up means the cold one's coming. You got an explanation for every clue. I'm on to you. You've been strutting around like some dive bar duke with your pearly snaps. Bought a brand new suit, polish your disposition, even shine your shoes. Light up room, give you long kisses, send you to the moon, you slam the screen door, honey. I see through. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. Thank you so much. Wow. 
<laughs> so, uh, Tal, I want to ask you a little bit about this record. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called Motel Bouquet. It just came out end of last month. And I was reading that the album was recorded uh, live in only the span of about three days. Mm -hmm. and, exactly three days. Uh, naturally, you know, I read that and I wonder, like, you know, the, the record, it, has, it feels so unhurried. It feels so sort of open. Um, and so I was reading that and thinking, like, was that like a, a self-imposed window of time that you guys put on yourself to try to do it in that in that quick a time span sort of yeah i like to record in one frame of mind in a very short period of time it makes i enjoy it more it makes the songs hang together more everybody in the room shares that same frame of mind um so that's one general rule we didn't say we got to do this in three days we actually started with just uh, one song that i wanted to get and ended up booking one day with yeah. these guys. And it felt so good that we booked two more days. We got four songs that first day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, can we please keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Were these all songs um, that you sort of had in your in your store and you mm -hmm. brought them to the to Noam and the and the band and Yeah. We had played a couple of shows together and you'd recorded on one or two things that I'd been working on, but nothing official and released in a you know, as official as a record is comes along every three years, you know, it feels yeah. like um, a very important moment for those songs. And you want to put them out the, the way that feels most true. So I'd gone around the block a few times trying to find my band and my, um, my, my new home in my new hometown, you know, my new crew in my new hometown. And so Noam and I had played a couple of shows. We'd written a song together that I hadn't recorded. I had tried a couple of songs out and just, didn't want to release them yet. So when we went to the studio, it just clicked. Yeah. And that felt like just keep running towards what feels good, you know? Yeah. And after that three day period, I mean, is it something where like in that short amount of time, you can sort of like push out, you know, distractions or not trouble yourself with too many decisions to make or things to add or take away? You're just sort of like in the pocket and then you let it go? Yes. I think what I love about touring is that purity of you have, well, today is an exception. We have two shows today, but yeah. usually you have one job. You have to get to the gig. You have to play it well. You get one shot at each song you're going to play that night. It's ephemeral. You, you know, there's lots of loading in, loading out, but there's this purity to a day where you can't really crowd it with much else than just accomplishing the one thing. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I like about that studio focus. It feels like everything that is unnecessary kind of falls away but it's not as if we just wandered in with some songs that were sketched out like we had worked them out and mapped out um arrangements we tried so many different versions of arrangements you know let's start with a chorus okay let, that didn't work let's what if we move this bridge you know so when we had the time with the band it was more of a party you didn't have to go you know writing your own chart out and right. figuring it at that moment doing your crossword puzzle in that moment it was <laughs> already mapped in a way. I think, you know, just to chime in, so many of our favorite records that, you know, this, this is essentially like at its core, it's folk music. It's You could call it roots music, like whatever mm -hmm. banner or umbrella you want to put it under. But I think our, our favorite records were, were really played live in the studio. And now with the technology exists, you could you could craft and sculpt a record mm -hmm. um, for months and years. And you can use that technology to... Um, create soundscapes and um, at, like atmospheric uh, kind of situations on these records that just wouldn't be possible back in the day and, and bands use that to like great effect. Mm -hmm. um, but I, for, for music of this kind of variety, which, which I see is like in, in its heart and soul is in, in the performance of the band and the singer delivering these songs kind of in real time to stray from that in the studio can sometimes be really tricky. And there's, mm -hmm. there's always, it seems like a luxury when you go into the studio because you could always tell yourself, oh, well, it's not quite there yet, but we'll fix it. We'll keep working on it or we'll overdub that yeah. or we'll re-sing that. And this situation really just started as an experiment to get, like Caitlin said, one song. And so we hired like our, our favorite musicians who kind of showed up and it felt very casual, even though it was like all these badass musicians and they right. just kind of, showed up at a friend's studio in the backyard and played the songs live and we, we, we played, you know, maybe four or five takes of each song and felt like, well, if we didn't have it, then, you know, maybe another day, maybe another day <laughs> or it needs some, some different treatment, but we're not going to 
you know, sculpt this or edit it uh, together or, um, you know, bit by bit. And so yeah. it just felt, felt live. And uh, it, I think, you know, reducing the number of options is, is sometimes a, a really great guideline or, or it's a, yeah. having that limitation um, can really help the process along. Yeah, a lot of artists I've talked to will say that having putting those limitations on on any art project is the most freeing thing you can do because it blocks out all of the possibilities and just lets you focus on the thing that you're doing in that moment. Yeah. Um, cool. So we're going to hear uh, a couple more from Caitlin Canty and you Noah Bacalny. Uh These are from Motel Bouquet, which came out March 30th. Tell me a little bit about the next one. Sure. Hmm. I wrote this one as sitting on the dock for the bay. <laughs> I think I was sitting on a, it wasn't really a bay, it was a lake, but I was envisioning an ocean. I was missing someone and I was reading the Odyssey <laughs> and all these things combined with this little song came pouring out. I don't know if I ever told you that stuff, but. No, I didn't know that. Just hang out with oh, me in interviews would've more would've often. treated it so much differently. <laughs> yeah. It's just would've reading had. the Odyssey, you know. Exactly. <laughs> It's, oh, a, man. it's a nice little book. It's a nice little book. All right.
generous applause. Thank you. <laughs> Gosh, thank you so much. So, uh, you know, we were just before uh, that beautiful song, we were talking about uh, touring and how it kind of, the relationship it has to recording and making these songs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about that. And uh, the last time, Caitlin, we had you in the studio, um, Motel Bouquet was still, you know, in the pipeline. It was That's a right. few months from coming out. Mm -hmm. And now it's been out for about a month and you guys are playing these songs every night on the road. And so, you know, I wonder as a performer, because these songs also have a very personal element to them. Mm -hmm. And as you now, you know, the record is out and you're on the road, do the, do the songs, like, do they change for you as you go city to city, as you play them night after night, you know, in your mind or in, as they relate to people who are watching you play them? How do the songs kind of evolve? It's, it's pretty cool. So we're still really at the beginning of yeah. everything. We did um, four shows on the West Coast before the record came out, which is the proper way to release a record. <laughs> Uh, run around with it before you even have it in your hands. And then we played last night in Boston, and we did two shows there. So tonight's New York City. Um, I, so I don't think I've had too long of a um, world tour yet to start, you know, feeling like I, it's, it's, it's really cool to take them, at least right now, my first assessment of this whole record release tour is it feels like I'm going back to the basics where we were working on the songs around the kitchen table or on a couch or like just you know hey what do you think about this and it was just Noam and I running these through before the band came in so it does feel a little bit like we're you know at the core of where these songs came from which is pretty cool to do and I don't always get to tour with Noam he's in Punch Brothers he's got his own projects his calendar has very few spaces in it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got these five dates to this record release tour on, on, in my old stomping grounds, which your question, I was thinking about this on the drive here. I, I lived in New York City for a decade. I felt like Boston, where we played last night, was my musical home in a way. I inserted myself into that folk community. I grew up in Vermont where we're heading after this, and I cut a record in Portland, Maine. So I feel like we're hitting all of these um, spots where I was a kid making music at one time. So there's lots of, I don't know, ghosts in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and it, there's some really awesome freshness to have new songs. Like in, we're, we play the whole album mm -hmm. at the show, which it just feels, right now, I don't feel like there's um, anything but like newness and freshness and excitement about the songs. I'll visit you in a year and I'll tell you how they've evolved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the, the trickiest thing from going, like, from putting the finishing touches on a record and then playing it live is that if you're not playing it with the exact same instrumentation or the exact same people who played it in the record, the songs are just by default going to reinvent themselves. Right. And so this record is, it's a five-piece band, six-piece band on some some tracks. And so when you when you go from, like, Hearing that record nonstop as you as you mix it and master it and you know, uh, it's just so ingrained and so the the process of like okay let's 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 start practicing some of these songs as as a duo, you know the immediate reaction I at least I always have is like okay well we're missing a whole lot here where's Eva yeah. <laughs> yeah because you're you're wanting to hear everything that you've been um, kind of tuning into for, for months as you finish the record. And so I think a lot of the process of, of getting them out on the road is figuring out, like, what does this song mean as a duo? Like, what, what, how do our roles change? Like, the, Caitlin has to play guitar, um, like, in a different way when we don't have a drummer and electric mm -hmm. guitar, and I'm also having to, like, fill in for, for percussion <laughs> and stuff. And so I think there's this kind of uh, mercurial nature of, like, the arrangements of, like, who's going to be picking up the, the various parts and um, you know, ultimately, there has to be a letting go of what's on the record, and oh, yeah. kind of an embrace of, of what's uh, what's new in the in the new format of it. Yeah, is that something that can change night to night as you're playing it? You realize new things, or you hear Definitely. something different. We'll or... talk about it. We're keeping, uh, we're trying a set list, and, and we change that you know night to night depending on how much time we have to play. Yeah. But um, no, that, things are constantly evolving because we're we listen back or we check in on, oh, that one felt slow, or that one, you know, uh, it's changing, not the full yeah, or change, Changing the feel after. of a song just yeah. because of the, the duo nature of it or, or, you know, dynamically trying to, you know, craft it in a different way. So it, I think that that never changes. And even for, you know, bands that record albums and, 
and then go tour with the actual studio band or like the, you know, if it was a five piece band in the studio that goes on the road, you still are, are learning those songs and, <laughs> and noticing things for years of like how you um, actually want to play it. And that's like kind of the ultimate irony of, of studio records in that there are these permanent kind of relics yeah. uh, of, of someone's song, a band's performance, and oftentimes they're recorded kind of in their infancy. And it's after years of playing them in front of an audience that they actually kind of come into uh, fruition. And despite the fact that they were recorded <laughs> so uh, so far in the I've past. I've never really, I've never been in a band like that. I've been in a wedding band when I was starting out, but we were, you know, Counts just covering songs. Yeah. Um, but so my, you know, I, I tend to do cherry picking tours. I tend to do five to 10 date tours, go to places I love. And I usually have a different format for, you know, Luckily, I have Noam on this tour. Luckily, I have Eric Haywood on the next tour and Maya DeVitri. And so I, my songs are always evolving based on who's playing along or singing along, too. Um, but yeah, I do hear, like I just said, where's Aoife? I hear Aoife O'Donovan, who sang harmonies on this, folk, on this record. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I do miss her some nights on those parts. <laughs> yeah. Phantom, uh, Phantom, Phantom Aoife O'Donovan syndrome. <laughs> Call yeah. your doctor immediately. We, we should have added, like, you know, her voice, you know, somehow yeah. on a track. Oh. <laughs> we'll just call her up and hold it up. It's the, yeah, just hold like hold the, the phone. phone up. Like, yeah, on FaceTime maybe. This is a good idea. Um, cool. So uh, we're going to do one more uh, with yes. Caitlin oh. Canty and Noam Bukelny, uh from Motel Bouquet. Tell me about what we're going to finish it off with. Sure. Um, well, you know, when, when you uh, make a record, one of the harder things is naming it, I think. Um, or you're, that, that's where the marketing side comes in, which is not really the, the fun bit as far as I'm concerned. And so I was talking to my producer about titles, and this was one of my favorite songs on the record. And so sometimes you name it after one of your favorite songs. And this song is called Who. And so Noam said, Caitlin Canty, Who? <laughs> it's like there's an implied question mark. Yeah. And that's your title. Can't, can't really call your record Caitlin Canty. <laughs> Who? <laughs> so it's, oh, it's only like one notch better than Caitlin Canty. Why? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, the thunderous laughter. Um, so this song is, you know, the not the title track, but it would have been if if I didn't have to suffer through that. I, I'm telling the story now, so I, I mean, I might as well have named it Who. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you still have the time. Best, best yeah. of both worlds, yeah. 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 The greatest the hits record. record could be called <laughs> Caitlin Canty Who. <laughs> you only printed 500,000 copies. <laughs> They're flying off the shelves. <clears throat>
took the love from my fingertips. You took the red from my mouth. Put the light out. Guys, thank you so much. Um, everyone, of course, this is Caitlin Canty and Noam Bukelny. Noam uh, produced Caitlin's latest records called Motel Bouquet. Came out on March 30th. Uh, these guys are on tour together right now. Yeah. Um, including tonight at uh, Rockwood Music Hall here in New York City, your former hometown, your one-time hometown. Exactly. Uh, and there are more dates to be found on CaitlinCanty.com, so uh, check those out there uh, on Also Find Songs and all kinds of other information. And I should point out, also check out uh, Noam's record from last year, uh, Universal Favorite, which is a great album that we all nice. loved around here. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, congrats on the record. It really is a Thank great you. album. Thank you. And uh, have a great tour. Thank you so much. Thanks for having for us. For coming to Pace yeah. and playing in our studio today. Anytime. And you know, normally I say, please come back and play for us again anytime. And this time it only took like three months. <laughs> So, you know, really, come back and play for us again anytime. What are you all doing tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, we have couches here, you know? There's a lot of room. Uh, so, yeah, thank you again, and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right.